Welcome to Tinnitus Energy Update. The question for today is why do some people suffer more from tinnitus than others? The answer today comes from a German study of 100 patients with tinnitus, Meniere's, or vertigo who were referred to a specialized neuroontological and psychosomatic center. I'll post the reference below. For those who don't know, neuroontological means specialist in nerves of hearing. So neuroontological means a specialist in nerves of hearing and balance. Psychosomatic refers to your thoughts affecting your body. I know psychosomatic has a bad reputation, but we all know that our mind, especially stress, affects our body. So how many people did they find suffer from tinnitus? In this study, they found about 4% of the German population, that's 2.9 million, have chronic tinnitus and 50% suffer from it severely in their daily life. So that's about 1.5 million. So 50% successfully habituate, which means the patients can completely compensate for their tinnitus. And then they no longer suffer from, they no longer suffer from the tinnitus. Now, they would still say they hear it if they think about it, but they don't suffer from it. For many, this occurs as a normal process, this habituation. Others need to work at it. This study defines habituation process as learning to understand the phenomena and gaining the ability to diminish one's own increased hearing arousal. That's kind of complicated, but basically what that means is they understand what's happening, why it's happening, and they don't get stressed about it. In this study, they looked uh, for the need of hearing of a hearing aid in 38% these patients referred for hearing aid. So we'll talk more about it in the next tinnitus synergy update. It's important to note, these people were already looking for super specialists in hearing and the mind. So that's why they went to this neuroontological and psychosomatic center. Easy for me to say. They, um, the researchers looked very carefully for psychological illness and they looked for it was bad enough so not just psychological illness, but psychological illness that was bad enough to likely worsen the tinnitus or interfere with habituation. 73% were classified as having psychological illness. That doesn't mean they were out of control. Mostly it was depression or anxiety. Interesting, isn't it? I find that many of my patients that have suffered from any long-term illness, pain, or dysfunction will get some degree of depression or anxiety. I mean, who wouldn't? When doctors tell you you're crazy and then there's nothing wrong or there's no hope for improvement. Well, but apart from that, this study identified some other conditions and attitudes that can also interfere with the ability to habituate. And this may be helpful for you. They include um, a consistently negative attitude towards tinnitus. It's hard not to have that. The persistent demand that the tinnitus can be extinguished perfectly without continued effort. That may be a bit unrealistic. The belief that tinnitus is a sign of serious illness or that this is going to ruin your life. Next, difficulty in trying out new or corrective experiences, mainly caused by fear. So what can we use now from this study? What's our application? A good understanding, a good attitude, and reducing stress about tinnitus can reduce suffering. Next, being willing to try new therapies. Um, that can help reduce your suffering. So those are the two things to take away from this. What about future applications? Well, there's something called CBT, or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Most of you are probably familiar with this. There's also TRT, or Tinnitus Retraining Therapy. Those are a couple of ways people learn to understand and reduce stress about tinnitus. Now, what if those Cognitive Behavioral and Retraining Therapies were available in an app? What if those therapies were in combination with other physical and auditory therapies for tinnitus. So if you have some awareness of some, some uh, apps out there that do this or some other processes, there are certainly cognitive behavioral therapists all around that are trained to do this. Um, and there are some research on apps that do this. And I'll tell you more about that in the coming to future, um, in the future. So here's our call to action. So I'd like to know your thoughts. 
please leave a comment or request a review of a particular research study. To stay connected to the latest developments in tinnitus, um, whether it be the research or the therapies, subscribe to our YouTube channel here and receive notifications of new therapies and our, when our video postings come out by subscribing to our email newsletter, tinnitusenergy.com. Thank you and may God bless you.